Well, we've initiated coverage on Spark infrastructure. Uh, the ticker is SKI. Just as a refresher, Spark's key uh, assets are 49% minority stakes in the South Australian Power Network and Victorian Power Network. So they are regulated electricity distribution networks located in Victoria and, and South Australia. Uh, it also owns a 15% stake in Transgrid. So Transgrid was the, uh, the New South Wales electricity transmission network that was privatised by the New South Wales government in 2015. Uh, yield is obviously the important component of the return here. So DPS guidance is for 15 and a quarter cents this year, 16 cents next year. And I can see that continuing to grow all the way through to at least 2021. So pl plenty of cash flow to support that. So the, uh, the DPS guidance implies a yield of 6.1% with 5% growth. And that strong yield is the reason why we've had it in our income model portfolio. Um, stock closed yesterday $2.48. Its high for the year was $2.88. That was in mid-June. Um, I've set my target price at $2.62. Um, so that's in indicating about 6% upside. So that target price is based on my sum of the parts valuation, and that implies an EV to EBITDA of 11.6 times and an EV to RAB of 1.46. So those who know the space well, that EV to RAB might raise some eyebrows. That's kind of like the sort of multiples you'd expect in an M&A transaction. The reason that Spark's different is because its key assets have a lot of unregulated earnings, which are very capital light. And also Spark's assets are chasing very hard for cost outs versus our regulatory assumptions. And that's sort of been built into the, uh, the valuation. So potential TSR there at 12-month basis is 12%. So, and that's sort of justifying the ad rating I put on the stock. Look, I think I'd be remiss not to point out but the, uh, the sort of the upside case here is M&A activity. There's obvious appetite among super funds, pension funds, infrastructure funds, etc., for these very scarce Australian regulated utility assets. Um, over time, we've seen the takeovers on the listed market of GasNet, of Investra, of Duet. Uh, the last couple of years, we've seen um, the real appetite for those New South Wales uh, electricity privatisation assets that have occurred also. So look, I'm only speculating, but one of the potential M&A plays here could see Chong Kong looking to take over mm -hmm. Spark infrastructure. The logic there is that um, Chong Kong already owns 51% of those assets that uh, Spark owns 49% of. Chong Kong has acquired Investra, has acquired Duet, so it's got an obvious appetite for Australia. Uh, there's real logic of bringing together some of the assets within the Duet acquisition within uh, and within uh, what Spark already owns to get sort of our merger synergy benefits. So. As an upside case, if CKI or CK was willing to pay the same EV to regulated asset base that I think it paid for Duet's regulated assets, then it puts Spark on about a $2.95 valuation. So I'm not saying that's definitely going to happen. I'm not even saying, I don't even know what sort of time frame it could be on, but that is an upside case that uh, that's worth sort of considering with this stock.